they fell for it. Um, <laughs> better. Welcome to the November yes, 20th, 2023 regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Beacon City School District. Please stand for the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, for God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Slide down. Slide down. Vicki, roll call, please. Here. 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 Mr. Shutter? Here. Here. Mr. Sadler? Here. 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 Thank you. Matt, can you review the fire exits, please? Um, exits are in the back of the LGI. Thank you. Open to the public. Is there anyone here that would like to make a public statement? Seeing none. We have um, two workshops tonight. First, we have a presentation from our Foundation for Beacon Schools about their most recent um, good work they've done. Should you, should we have um, them over? Yeah, I mean that's where your slides are. If you wanna go through the slides. Uh, all right. Good evening. Thank you so much for having us. Just uh, wanted to stop by and provide a few updates um, for those who I haven't met yet. Um, my name is Anna Sullivan. This is Kit Burke Smith, and we're both board members um, on the Foundation for Beacon Schools. Um, we do try to come twice a year just to kind of let you know what we've been doing and um, what's coming down the pike. So um, we offer currently offer two rounds of educator grants, and at our November board meeting last week, um, the board voted on 16 uh, applications, um, which is, first of all, a milestone for the foundation because this foundation has been around for three years and we've been slowly kind of connecting with our educators and it was very exciting to see a large um, pool this, uh, this cycle. Uh, we just wanted to let you know about some of the awards. Um, you can see on screen that we had uh, six grants um, that were uh, awarded um, at the high school um, from a range of curriculum areas from science, music, um, project kayak, um, and English as a new language. Um, the students uh, in that group are going to be visiting um, the Museum of Natural History. So we were really excited to support um, some of these new opportunities. Um, we've got a balance of you know, projects that funding are funding equipment that can be reused um, year on year versus kind of one time trips um, and things that benefit students this year. Um, we had some applications um, from our Rombelt Middle School art teachers um, and uh, Italian language teacher. Um, so, yep, very, very happy to see some Rombelt. Um, applications in this um, in this pool, um, and then finally we had a range of elementary school grants, um, serving most all of the schools in the district. Uh, some applications were for projects that would touch all of the elementary schools, um, such as the uh, mindfulness um, SEL program submitted by Ms. Morrow, um, and. Um, some support for the MetLife Stadium visits that are for um, all fifth graders in the district. Um, and then there were some school-specific or building-specific projects, um, such as the Outdoor Sensory Project at South um, and the Blue Path Service Dogs visit um, and Mr. Carpenter's class at, class at Sargent. So a really nice range, um, again, of, of disciplines, students served, um, and a lot of really exciting new things going on. So very, very happy to um, be supporting those. And just a quick update, the total funding um, for this cycle um, was 14,000 and change. Um, we also awarded a 
$4,000 grant earlier on this fall, but I think you all are already aware of that. Uh, but that brings our um, giving as of today um, just to around 40000 So we're definitely getting there and um, very grateful to the district and to all of the educators um, who are providing these amazing learning experiences. Um, and yeah, just want to thank you all and introduce you to Kit Burksmith. Hello, do I need to talk into the microphone? <laughs> no, you can stay. Okay. okay, cool. I'm just going to do this <laughs> yeah. then. Um, and this moves when you lean on it, so I'm not doing that either. <laughs> um, I, first of all, I hadn't actually seen this graph before. I really love it. That makes, that's just, it brings me a lot of joy to see all the funding that's happened and the growth in that. So I want to talk a little bit more about this last grant cycle and the near future for the foundation. So we've been doing a good job. We've seen improvement in getting the word out to teachers and educators and staff. This is the first grant cycle where we have funded all six schools in the district in the same cycle. There's some subjects like ENL and art that had not applied for grants before. So it's the first time we've been able to support that as well. So, you know, Anna said it was a milestone grant season for us. And I just wanted to give you a couple more points on that. We also received 26 grant applications, which two years ago in this cycle, we received four. So that's great, We but we funded 16. So we had requests for over $30,000 and we funded approximately 14,000. So going into the future, we're gonna be shifting our focus a bit to try to raise more money. So we're going into a period with the foundation where we're having some leadership changes. Anna will still be on the board, but she's no longer going to be the chair. And we have a few different positions that are open and we're voting next month on that. Um, and we're also going to be trying to strategically raise more money so we can give out more grants. And that's really all I had to say. So thank you guys so much for supporting schools. You, yes, I have a question. Am I allowed? To, I haven't been to a meeting in a long time, so I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm allowed to answer questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, amazing. <laughs> um, but I was just thinking, you, from where you started with a few number of applications, obviously where you are with the total yeah. number of applications and how many you were able to grant, for the teachers that are um, submitted in their proposals for these, is there any kind of like requirement because you're like you said, you're going to start to need to raise more money. So is there yeah. any kind of requirements or something that says that, um, like, how are you going to get, how are you going to work towards raising more money? Is it something you could put in the application that says, have you raised, like, something that can, a give and take in a sense so that you. So, like, asking the teachers to help us Or with do they help? Like, I'm just curious. Oh, I don't no. know. Yeah, that's um, a great question. Um, we don't ask the teachers to help in funding it. Mm -hmm. We do ask a couple things of them. We try to keep the grant application as simple and straightforward as possible because we're not trying to give them more work. Right. So we do ask if it could have been funded by the COSER or the PTO or the PTA or the PTSO. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to not, gotcha. you know, step on anyone else's toes or fund things that could have been funded a different way. Mm -hmm. We're really trying to dovetail with what already exists for the schools. Gotcha. Are you looking to get any, like, educators, are there any educators currently involved within the foundation on the board or whatever to just kind of because obviously the word is getting out, right? But you don't want to run out of money, so. Right, so educators specifically within the BCSD? Right, like are they, are they on the board? Or they, do they have any um, kind of role within the foundation or no? We have advisory mm -hmm. board members that represent that aspect of the community. So, um, and we're always open to talking with anybody and getting any help and support we can from people. Hmm. When, you, when you ask of these, these ideas can be funded and through different avenues. Do you sense? Do you get a sense that there's an understanding of what is should be funded by the COSER, should be funded on the building level, should be funded by the PTO? That's a good question. Um, I think it probably varies a bit depending on the applicants. We do information sessions as well, and we're also available via email with anybody. So Anna and I both have worked with people that are working on putting together the applications so we can help them answer those questions more accurately. I think, in general, those are some of the questions we found since we started. What's the difference between the foundation and the PTAs, for right. example? Yeah, I'm just wondering if that's like an, a thing to I mean, we, admin you know, um, Anna and I, over the last few years, 
have developed a little bit of a shorthand around like there's there's some grants that come in that are just really clearly the district should be funding them. Mm -hmm. Those tend to be just like equipment or yeah, you know something where it's like someone just needs whatever that thing is to uh, do this teaching, and so it, it's like some somehow just didn't get to us through the budget process or um, or didn't get approved or whatever, but it makes sense for us to fund it. So there's those, like there's ones that uh, we may take over the funding for, you know, after they funded for a year or two. Um, and then there's ones that they just kind of have to make a decision on that it just might not, maybe the grant needs to get a little stronger or right. tighter or something I, I like that. It's just asking about that so that if there's something on the district side that, because we this is something we've noticed over time, like what like an understanding of what should be asked. Like many of us had been on PTOs and know the requests you get for that. And so it's more about creating some efficiency so that before they like submit a grant application that they understand what's available to them. And if there's like some sort of information session that would be possible with the foundation and PTOs and the principal at each school so that they can understand like this is how the funding works. And, yeah. and then my part, my part two to this question is, do you have a sense of why the applications have grown and how other how teachers are learning about the, the foundation? Also great questions. Um, and there's one thing I wanted to throw in back for that last one is, we do try to focus specifically on projects and applications that are uh, innovative. So we're not trying to fund things that are already have been funded, mm -hmm. we're trying to help people start new things and try out new ideas. Okay. So we, we have a tendency to, that's where our, we're looking. It's more of like an incubator. Exactly, right? yeah. Okay. Um, in regards to how and why the word has gotten out. Yeah, I mean, if, they, just, if they mentioned like how they've heard about it. Yeah, we should, <laughs> we've been working on that. So it's like the more time that goes by, the more people are gonna hear about it. Sure. Um, so we're in contact with all of the principals. We go to information sessions. We talked, I mean, I literally email all my kids' teachers and go, hey, just so you know, this is coming up. Yeah. Um, and they all talk. So once a grant happens and it's successful, they talk to each other. We share that on our social media and our newsletter. We just had our gala recently where six people, six teachers that had received awards uh, in the past from a award they got awards because they did grants in the past. So we're trying to share the information, not just before the grant application, but to say, look at what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. And then that, I think, you know, there's a tipping point of information. So right. I think we're getting there. Okay. I was going to ask you about that, the advertisement part of it. Like, yeah. I, it, I've seen you on Facebook okay. and, and I, I've heard about the gala, but your newsletter, does that go out to all the families within the district as well? Her email list goes to anybody that wants to be on it. Okay. So, um, I'm just trying to think of ways to make sure that you guys continue to get money. <laughs> yeah. We also, the opening day for staff, um, the found, like when the, all the teachers and uh, other folks are together, the foundation gives a little speech and talks to everybody about, especially about the grant process. And I was just wondering if families know about it, like all the families know all of what you're doing. I think that's actually in some ways more, because I do think the teachers have grown mm -hmm. more aware of it through the, you know, the Welcome Back Teachers Day and um, through honoring teachers for their work. But um, I think that, Matt, you have mentioned a few times in your superintendent's report about the foundation, and I think that that just mm -hmm. needs to... I mean, to highlight it more, I just feel like this yeah. is amazing stuff that you're doing, and I think families, family members, caregivers need to see all of that your foundation is doing to show, like, the collaboration within the community as well. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully in return that helps also continue to build the fundraiser and the funds because you're doing yeah. such amazing things and not everyone, they might know, you know, I don't want the district to get all the credit. Like, I feel like there should be some credit that says that you teachers are, with the district. <laughs> fine with but even mm -hmm. still, like, that's to raise more funds so more yeah. teachers are able to, to get their grants approved and, and to know that it's innovative stuff, right? It's not just your traditional, some of your traditional stuff, but more outside the box creativity. Yeah. I just feel like it's amazing. And I feel like everyone should know about it. 
Well, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, that is basically you just summed up our focus for 2024. That's <laughs> what we're going to be looking at more for this next calendar year. Well, it, I think it's really exciting and I'm so grateful. And I want to thank you again for the um, $4,000 grant for children, for students taking the DCC courses because I think that's been really huge and acknowledging a, a very big gap that was created when they started charging tuition. Yeah. Um, and just in general, I think, you know, I've always said that the uh, the health of the district can be measured by, you know, whether or not there's a foundation supporting it and things like that. And so it's just amazing that you guys are what you've done in a really short period of time. And um, thank, thank you. you. Any other questions? Oh, thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Have guys. a good Thanksgiving. You, you too. too. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> and next we are going, oh, you are here. Um, we're going to hear from Sigario Rudicindo O'Neill, our assistant superintendent of curriculum and student services about our district comprehensive improvement plan. I'm just going to do the panel, this, the slide deck, that's what they call it now. I'm going to be real brief. <laughs> okay. Um, so every year, well, until we're no longer monitored, I guess, uh, we still have one school sergeant that's still considered monitor. So they do a, a plan, a, a school-based plan, and then the district has to do an overall plan. So I'm here to share it tonight. So first, I just want to talk about the process. So as always, the district plan does involve a huge process in terms of we work in collaboration with Sargent. KDB already did a very nice job in making sure that at, at Sargent, they were kind of doing this around um, throughout the school year, having their data meetings, analyzing data, looking at long and short term planning. They had school based committee meetings as well as they handed out an in-school equity survey that they needed to do for their plan, and then they did some goal setting. So then we identified three priorities that are actually in line with the district's strategic plan, as well as ways to support not just uh, Sargent, but also the other schools in our district. So the first one is we commit to creating a welcoming school environment where every child feels safe, respected, represented, supported, and has a true sense of belonging. We are committed to designing meaningful learning experiences to ensure that every student is engaged in work that is collaborative, relevant, and personalized. And then our final commitment is we commit to ongoing professional development and intentional conversation amongst the staff around diversity, equity, access, and inclusion. So our first priority. So actions for priority number one. So one of the things that we are doing is that we are engaging uh, staff members in professional learning opportunities that support not just social, uh, social emotional learning and diversity, equity, and inclusion, but also looking at responsive practices. So that's something that the district has committed to. Um, not necessarily all responsive classroom, but looking also at responsive practices. Uh, we are also looking to provide all classrooms, continue to provide them with cult culturally authentic classroom libraries, mentor texts, and guided reading books. Part of um, providing this is also providing uh, professional development so that teachers understand the difference between a text and a culturally authentic text. And then one of the things that is being done this year is that Sargent is actually piloting a program called the Positivity Project. So because they're a school that's being monitored, they're trying out this new program that was actually uh, designed and created by two <laughs> former West Point cadets. And the program is evidence-based. They do uh, morning meetings, kind of like responsive classrooms, so it supports a lot of the responsive classroom techniques that are already being done, and they uh, center everything around four different uh, character traits. So every week there's a character trait that is being introduced. So I actually got to go today when they, and they launched it today, uh, they were introducing kindness. So that's the character trait kind of for the week. Um, this, this teachers introduce it in the classroom. It's about 15 minute lesson, so it doesn't take a lot of time away from classroom instruction. And since they have it already embedded into their schedule that they have those morning meetings, it fits in perfectly with their schedule. Then our priority number two, 
our plan of action is to support inquiry-based in, uh, curriculum mapping aligned with New York State standards. Uh, again, that's work that we've been doing throughout these past three years, and now that we are fully implementing the next generation standards, we're trying to make sure that all of our units of studies are aligned, uh, support, uh, support evidence-based strategies that promote literacy across all content area. So one of the things that we have really recommitted to was making sure that our students are getting evidence-based instruction in reading. So really supporting the science of reading, which is not a new concept, it's something, just a body of work that's been around for 60 years. So making sure that when teachers are sitting down with students and doing actual literacy lessons, that they're using research-based strategies, evidence-based strategies. So we're not focusing on programs, we're focusing on teaching and learning. Uh, the other thing that we've been doing is we have been working, we have two TOSAs uh, that are now, we went from one TOSA to two that are really supporting our teachers in our new uh, RTI MTSS model, focusing a lot on tier one and tier two interventions. And what those are is, is basically tier one interventions are strategies that a teacher uses for all students against evidence-based strategies across all content areas to support our students. And then anything that's tier two is when the teacher notices that a student needs some more support, working in small groups and giving them the support within the classroom. Our goal is an inclusive environment where students are not being outsourced outside the classroom, but getting support within the classroom. And then should the student need more support, then we have an IST model, which is student su uh, support team. We're moving away from that deficit language of response to, to intervention into an instructional uh, support team that talks about the child and how we can support the child still within the classroom and giving teachers more strategies that they can use within the classroom. And that goes in line with the strategy groups, which again supports the science of learning. So we, are not, we don't do guided reading per se. We still do comprehension because that's necessary, but we do strategy groups that actually support comprehension as well as decoding. And then priority number three, which is all around our professional learning. So these are just some of the uh, samples of some of the professional learning opportunity topics that we just did in our last professional learning day. So our teachers um, were able to take courses where they were talking about supporting ENL students across all classroom setting, inclusive practices, culturally responsive practices and pedagogy, restorative practices through indigenous storytelling, examining implicit bias, uh, creating trauma-sensitive spaces, as well as support, supporting neurodiverse students. So that's something that's going to be ongoing, particularly this year that our professional learning uh, days have been broken up a little bit differently. So we had the full day, and now we have some half days that are gonna be coming up. So we're planning on continuing, again, always with that lens of equity embedded into everything that we do, um, as well as making sure that we are, are aligning ourselves with the expectations of the state. Questions? Great questions. Oh, thanks for such a, I was reading the support material. It's very thorough and thank you so much for all the hard work. We have a, we have a good team. And one thing I, I do wanna say about our professional learning day, um, I think we should all be really proud that our professional learning day was all facilitated by our own staff. You know, so there were teachers that were facilitating, and that's something that we should be really, really proud of, that we did not have to go to the outside to do any of the professional learning. It was all done in-house with the experts that we have right here in the Beacon City School District. So that's, that's something that we should be very that's proud of. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. And just um, as you may know, uh, Saggy's been part of the Blue Ribbon Commission. Um, so... Uh, at a future board meeting, probably the next month or two, we were just going to have her do an overview of that work and to kind of, kind of give it like a personal update beyond what we've been reading about. <clears throat> um, welcome to our school board advisors. All right, does anybody have any comments that they would like to share? Or quite? Can I share really yeah. quick? Oh, Harsh, you've got a presentation. We're <laughs> <laughs> not read into this, Harsh. <laughs> yeah. All right, so along with the... Hi, my name's Harsh, by the way. Uh, Harsh <laughs> um, I'm part of the NHS, and uh, along with the NHS, we did a 
great um, project today. We kind of like finished it out today, but it's been going on for a couple of weeks. It's called um, Project Dream. And in this um, project, we kind of donate a lot of cans that are, um, we, that are donated by the community, and we um, donate to specific food shelters and uh, other organizations with the help of another sor sorority, um, Alpha Kappa. So right there on the left, you can see our biggest sponsor this year that came in last minute was uh, Folks Home Servicing, which donated around like 500 items, super last minute this morning, but um, it was amazing. And um, we got a lot of donations. We were there for like a couple hours sorting everything, putting them into boxes, and um, yeah, it was really successful. Um, <laughs> Here's um, Sophia and I. We went. We had to go out and buy items because people donated money as well. So we had to go out to um, local grocery stores and purchase <laughs> items. So I'm sure everyone's wondering. Well, how many items did we raise? <laughs> and that is a collective graph of the items. Um, the freshman with a amazing total of 39 <laughs> uh, really raised the bar. Um, but yeah, we see the sophomores, juniors uh, raising hundreds. And um, we had a, the BSU, which is a, a club in the high school, which is very active. And they started um, to do the competition by themselves. And um, they raised 171 items, which is amazing. Um, and then clearly the giant bar in the middle, um, <laughs> the seniors. Yeah, a lot of them can drive, so it makes it easier for them to get stuff. So yeah. 1,369. Um, that's insane. Uh, all in all, we raised nearly 2,000. We got nearly 2,000 items for donation. And items, I mean, like, you know, like the, you get like a big box of like macaroni and cheese that's able to be like individually wrapped and separated into like 50 different ones. That's something like that. Mm -hmm. So through that type of um, sorting, we were able to get this many items for eight different pantries in um, the Hudson Valley region. So, yeah. That's so, so awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Do you know how many years that, that's been happening? Oh, very long. Uh, like, well over a decade. There's, like, another slideshow with a, bu a bunch of pictures from, like, previous years. But really? um, I think that one has it from 2016, so I know we've been doing it for at least, like, 2016. Yeah. But it's been going on forever. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Was the class of 2024 dominant all four years? Uh, Harsh. Yeah. Good question. Honestly, I think so. I know they won. Okay, last, just checking. I, I know they won last year yeah. uh, again because oh, everyone like drives last minute and they'll buy stuff and then come back right, right. before the deadline. So yeah, yeah, yeah we won in uh, ice cream social. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it takes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ice cream still motivates me. Also. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's great to see. Yeah, thank you. Rachel, Alejandra, Sarah, do you guys have anything you want to? I think that, that covers what <laughs> Ethan's been working towards. So. Yeah, that's what the seniors <laughs> have been thinking about. Yeah. Well, that's a very worthy project, so thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, well, it is the Thanksgiving meeting, so I'm going to move on to our agenda. Um, does anyone need a, an executive session around the consent agenda? Um, and there are no changes to the agenda. Um, superintendent's report. Just have a few things I want to highlight tonight. Um, First is we're having this meeting in the midst of uh, parent care, parent caregiver teacher conference night, and you know so we have two half days today and tomorrow, and I just want to give a huge thank you to teachers for putting so much time into meeting with uh, as many families as they possibly can. Um, I know as a roundabout parent this year, I we got a few emails from teachers saying we have a few open slots, like you know please sign up. So that was cool to see. Uh, teachers doing that, and just a huge thank you to all the time they put in um, to to meet with us. It means a lot. Um, we have our December music performances for all of our schools starting in a couple of weeks. I emailed out those dates. They'll be up on the website as well. We'll put them out on social media. But um, the first week d kicks off with the high school and roundabout, I think December 5th and December 7th. Um, so just want to highlight those. They're great performances to see and you see just literally so many of our students uh, involved and it's a great opportunity and then Ron Bout's Drama Club has their production on December 8th and 9th uh, so I wanted to highlight that as well and then lastly uh, 
I wanted Heather to come down. This is where I'm putting you on the spot. Um, we, uh, we saw a huge need uh, in the community, really in the region, for uh, more special education services for pre-K students. Uh, so Heather um, and her team spent a lot of time putting together uh, a pre-K special education class. So I wanted Heather just to provide a brief update on where we are with that. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so there's an application called a 4410 application that the uh, state needs to approve to authorize a school district to run a special education classroom for preschool students. So here in Beacon, we have a 611, which is in idea, six students, one teacher, and one teaching assistant, but it's an integrated class, meaning there's six students without disabilities in the same class. So it's a classroom of 12, and the teacher is dual certified, special education and general education. The application is massive. Um, it's a huge, arduous process to get through um, because they need your floor plans and they need to know your square footage of each room in the building and which building is the most appropriate to have it. Um, and you have to have site visits where the state comes and visits you. Um, and we, the application went through um, after many, many revisions um, I, because a lot of it is I needed guidance. I didn't have a model to look at um, so we were, I was just really doing this because I believed that as a beacon, we should be serving all of our students, and this was an opportunity we had. Um, so we received our letter of approval, I think, the day before school started, which I was sweating. Um, so it came through. They've already done one site visit, so they've come here already one time. The classroom is at Sargent Elementary School. Um, and the, the really neat thing, so we are now going to be entering into a contract with Dutchess County for reimbursement for the program at the rate set. The state determines the amount of money. You put in a proposal, they come back with a rate set, you contract with the county, and the county reimburses you at that rate. Um, right now the county is providing the related services to the classroom, so all the speech, OT, PT is all provided by the county. So we have county providers in all of the other classrooms as well. Um, and so they're also serving this specialized classroom. It's very exciting. The students are going to art and music and PE with our other littles, um, which is really exciting. And other school districts are now calling us to say, what did you do? Because the state has had um, indicated that they would provide us guidance in how to do this. Um, for a whole year, they've said, you know, we're going to provide you with like training and videos and everything on how to do this. And we didn't receive that. They, they keep telling us it's coming, um, but, you know, we have a sense of urgency here in that we need to support our children. And it's very exciting for Beacon. It's, um, I hope you get a chance to visit it. Um, the other school districts are calling to see, you know, how do we do this. Um, so I'm really excited about it. And I'm thankful. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, I just awesome. want to. Yeah emphasize um, that uh, how this is really helping to fill a huge need in the community. A, B, we're the only district in Dutchess County and probably one of the only districts in the region doing this, along with uh, is all the um, gen ed pre-K classes we offer. We probably offer more in that area than any other district in Dutchess too. Um, but it just, to a family, uh, to a family of a four-year-old um, experiencing um, difficulties, uh, learning difficulties, this class is like a gift, you know, and, and it, or just something that comes right at the right time. And so it's House of Sergeant, and uh, it's just been a, just a really nice addition. And we probably don't do enough to, um, you know, to blast out some of these successes that we have. So... Uh, we're going to try to do a better job of that, but this is really unique. And it, Heather's understating the amount of work <laughs> that they put in to do this because state applications usually scare most people away from doing anything, and uh, which is something that should change, by the way. But um, but anyway, I just wanted to take a second to highlight it because it's, it's really powerful. And Heather, these would be students that would typically be bus to elsewhere. Yeah, so that's the other positive is they'd be on long bus rides potentially. There there aren't as many programs as we would hope there would be for students. Mm -hmm. I would say we are definitely at a struggling point in preschool. Like mm -hmm. it, we are really struggling to find providers. Um, and it's provided by the county. So that, you know, it's it's really out of our control in that in that way. But they are traveling on buses long distances at times and maybe in partial day programs because that's what we can find in the moment to help right. a child. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we can provide this at an equitable rate to our general education who are in our preschool is just remarkable. 
for yeah, those. I think kids. it's yeah. on a human level that is that age is when kids would typically be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So you have families who are dealing with that diagnosis and kind of rearrange how it rearranges their whole life mm -hmm. and future as a family. Then finding a program then putting that preschooler on a bus for a long stretch. Yeah, they're so tender at that age. And, I mean, the vulnerability is, is you know, not to be underestimated. So thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Maybe this is a, um, maybe you would like to present at NISBA about I'd be happy this. to do I that. Like, okay. <laughs> I well, understand if, that application. <laughs> well, it sounds like something that, you know, that other districts aren't doing, and, and it might really be useful for people to hear about it. It's true. I'll put in an application. Okay. <laughs> In my free time, I'll do that. Let's see where it's going to be first. Okay, yes, find yeah, out where it's going to be. It's in the city. city. Oh, it is? It's oh, city. all right. It's oh, city. Oh, oh. When everyone wants to go to. We'll um, on a train. <laughs> all right, thank you. I have one other quick announcement to the board. Uh, we are working on putting together, typically every year I do some sort of uh, student uh advisory meetings um, where I'll meet with groups of students at every grade from 12th all the way to 5th. Um, so the principals put the groups together. They put together kind of just a really big mix of kids, you know, with lots of different interests. Uh, and usually we talk about ways to improve the district, things to think about for the budget. This year, I know many of you are very busy during the day, um, and that's the only time we can do this, but I'd like to invite board members to these. So we're working on the schedule. It's going to take place kind of stretches out over the next three months, really, December, January, into February a little bit. So once I get the schedule set, I'll put that out uh, to board members to join. And if it's even just like if you can just make one or two or whatever, we'd love to make those available for you because they are just incredible learning experiences because you really get to hear what our students are thinking about you know everything. So, um, so look for that. I'll be putting that together. We'll have the schedule ready the week or two after Thanksgiving. Super. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks okay. for thinking of that. Um, okay, board comments. Um, Semra, do you have any? Um, I'll just say it's been great to hear all the wonderful things that yeah. the students are doing, the foundation is doing, um, Heather, amazing. <laughs> Congratulations all around. That's all. Thank you. Kristen? Uh, so I attended the Foundation for Begin School Gala and um, the, it was it was incredible to see these teachers who had been one of some of the early adopters in applying for grants and um, taking sort of a leap of faith on you know what this might mean for their classroom and and that sort of like desire to innovate and to seek out resources and um, to to see them you know highlighted and celebrated was uh, was a really heartening experience and I look forward to all future events um, and. I'm so excited to hear about this. Um, well, I, I will say, Saggy, with the DSEP, that was when I first started getting involved in school. the schools. We were a target school. And I remember reading other districts' DSEPs <laughs> to try to understand what was involved. And um, I developed a pretty serious appreciation for how much work goes into that. So thank you for all your hard work. And uh, yes, Heather, thank you so much for something that will be like, you know, very life altering for a lot of families here. So thank you for that hard work and getting through that application. And, um, and thanks to the student at NHS for all the work they did. So it's the gratitude comments. Mm -hmm. And thank you to the <laughs> facilities department, which left already, but they were. They went through like a very um, lengthy process in identifying the bids for the capital project and uh, reorganizing uh, our schedule and how that will work going forward. It was a huge effort and um, I'm really grateful to them as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, Eunice. More thank yous. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you to Mrs. Silverman, Mrs. Sanderson, Ms. O'Connors, and their class um, for the lovely notes they gave um, me for Board Appreciation Week. Um, and I just want to mention that the next policy meeting is on for December 4th at 6. The next district wellness meeting is December 14th um, at 4. And that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. And the next facilities meeting is also December 4th, just to okay. mention. That's right. Yeah, seven. Um, I mentioned that. Alina. 
So I had a thought, and I don't know if this is the place for it, but my kids came to me with this thought about, because today and tomorrow we're doing parent-teacher conference, or <clears throat> no, how did you say it? Parent-family-caregiver? <laughs> I like that. I got to get used to that. Um, but we only do it in the, in the I'm going to say fall because I work in high ed, but we only do it in the first quarter, that first, second quarter. Is there a reason why we don't do it in the third or fourth quarter? And I only ask because... They change over to different classes in the third and fourth quarter if they're changing their electives or whatever. And if a student's struggling, say when they had the parent-teacher conference this quarter or the end of first quarter and they're struggling, and I know there'll be some type of follow-up. We, we assume that the teacher will reach out or inform the student. But I'm curious why we never do one in the other half of the school year as a catch-up, to, as not a catch-up but or, or a check-in to see how students are finishing up and finishing strong. I think it's something, I don't know why, if it was been talked about before, I don't know if there's any rule, regulations, policies, or anything like that. I just think it'd be a great idea to do some type of parent, teacher, caregiver conference in the second half of the school year, especially after the pandemic with everything, the, all the learning curves and just different things that are coming through, um, our attendance rate, just so much that it's happening because of COVID. I just feel like, It'd be a great idea to start doing parent-teacher conferences or something in the second half of the school year to make sure that we stay on track with our students and that they're passing and if they need the extra help. Um, there's so many people I see when I'm reading social media who's asking for a tutor for this or help with that. And so I just, and I know that we, we would say a teacher most likely will call that student or call that parent and but sometimes I get lost in, in translation, but if there's a day like, like we have today and tomorrow was dedicated for these conferences virtually and in person, I think will be a benefit to our district um, and, and, and our students. Um, so I don't know how far that goes. That's just kind of a comment or thought that I had that my girls, what my, my daughters asked me today, like, why isn't there one in the second half? And I said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's a little bit based on their contract, isn't it? Or it's a little bit. We've explored it in the past. Um, I think prior to me being here, they, there were some times that they did it, and they were really uh, poorly attended for whatever reason. Um, but, I, you know, we can always bring ideas back up. So I think we just will, especially like the kids in different new classes and stuff like that. Yeah. Makes sense. And then thank you for all the presentations today, especially for the foundation. Like, you need to push that out there. <laughs> <laughs> you need to let people know that it's amazing. I think they might recruit you. Really. Listen, <laughs> I'm just saying it's amazing all the work that the teachers are doing um, with, but with the help of your foundation. Like, I just, that's just amazing. And, and I don't know if people really realize that impact that it has on our students. Um, it's because it's those trips, it's those things that students really remember and make them want to wake up in the morning and come to school the following day because they have something going on that's not the normal or watching a movie in the classroom or we're going, you know, especially with your art programs. Like you said, you didn't really have art or was it art and science or? Art and E&L. E &L, like, yeah, like that's amazing. Like, but so thank you and your whole board and everyone who's donated to your, to the foundation. Um, but yeah. Thank you. Eric? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that I attended the curriculum committee meeting a month ago, or back in, um, uh, it was October 25th. Um, they discussed pretty much the setup for their um, superintendent's conference day, which took place a couple weeks ago. Uh, Saggy did a good job. It's a secondary and then the elementary. Um, well run, um, seemed to have a really good plan. Um, so I appreciated that. They have another meeting next uh, Wednesday where they'll probably talk about how the day actually did go from, you know, their perspective, which, which will be good to hear as well. So I appreciated that. Um, I did happen to be, I don't know why I'm watching this, but I was watching the Blue Ribbon Commission um, with the new uh, standards, uh, graduation standards, and it was very nice to see Saggy sitting three seats down on camera pretty much the whole meeting, <laughs> represented us very nicely, so that was very nice to see. Um, the, uh, we do have, an, I believe, an audit committee meeting coming up the 18th, I believe. Um, is that right? That is what I have on my calendar. Okay, that's what I had too, so I yeah. just wanted to verify yeah. that. Uh, and the last thing, I just wanted to mention this, that the um, 
last week the high school ba varsity basketball team had a kickoff dinner. It was their first time they ever did it. Um, it was the varsity players, so a lot of community members, and honestly, there were like 12 or 13 teachers that were there from the high school. It was really cool. Uh, it was nice to see. It was at St. Rocco's. It was very well attended. They had a guest speaker. It was just nice to see a combination of the community, uh, the team. The team was all there dressed in polos. They, they looked sharp. The four, four of the basketball players talked about the season. Um, like, uh, and it wasn't just about winning. It was just it, it, one was, and they all had different little things that they talked about. One about family, one about community, one about what it was like to be a sophomore. Now I'm a senior, so it was kind of really a nice evening. It was the first time that they had done it, and hopefully it continues. It was just a really, really positive night, um, not just for the basketball team, but I thought for uh, the school and um, for the community itself. So, awesome. Thank you, Anthony. Just want to say happy Thanksgiving and enjoy the time with your family. Thank you. Laura? Hi. So uh, November 16th, the Dutchess County School Boards Association Advocacy Committee had its first meeting. Um, and we talked about uh, basically the goals of this organization. So essentially, this is a group of all Dutchess County school boards. And we are representatives from that group who have come together to work specifically on advocacy issues. So last year, the first project that we did involved putting together resolutions for the New York State School Board Association, and we focused on um, preschool supports for um, special education students. And thank you to Heather for being such an incredible resource during that process. You were, you were such the expert in our corner, and it was super helpful. Um, so we developed some resolutions, and they were passed um, by a huge margin um, throughout the, by representatives throughout the state, and now they will become um, advocacy points for the New York State School Board Association when they advocate in the state, in, in Albany, so that's, uh, that's a great step forward. And now we want to expand on the work of the committee, and so we got together, we talked about what the mission of the committee is, what we want to do beyond um, developing resolutions, so we talked about uh, bringing experts, identifying topics that we feel are issues that are affecting all the districts um, in Dutchess County, uh, bringing in experts to talk about those issues, put together language and talking points to enable people to write letters, speak to their legislators, but also speak to regulatory agencies, and then partner with organizations like the Lower Hudson Education Coalition, NISBA, NYSA, PTAs, etc., just to make sure that we're coordinating efforts and not duplicating them. And ultimately, this all comes down to talking to legislators, talking to people in charge, making uh, everyone aware of and speaking in a united voice about the issues that are impacting Dutchess County. And very often those are issues that are impacting districts around the state. So we, um, we started to put together an initial list of topics, um, but I would encourage everybody on the board, if there are advocacy issues that you feel are really important that we should be focusing on this year, please um, bring them up now or email me because we're having our first working group um, the first Thursday of December. We're going to break in. This is like the Dutchess County School Board Association's regular meeting, but this time we're having it in person, and we're focusing entirely on advocacy. So we're going to break into groups. We're going to start delegating topics and tasks. So that means different districts will be focused on um, writing specific resolutions for NISBA. We'll be focused on bringing in experts and helping coordinate efforts around those specific issues. We're going to create a calendar and sort of work backward from you know, when are the resolutions due, when is budget season, when do we need to talk to our, to our legislators and sort of make everything work with that timeline. Since we're not having a prowl committee meeting uh, in December, I would encourage our prowl committee members maybe to attend. Um, but I will send information around about that meeting so there will be more details uh, to come. But that's all from me. And can you, do you have that list that we started? Um, I do. I do, actually. You could, I mean, if you can send it around if you yeah. don't have it act, um, accessible. It's not very long, though. That's a great, yeah. I'll just share that uh, Google Doc, and everybody just add to it. Thank you. Yep. Um, I also just wanted to express my gratitude for the great presentations and um, all the hard work and it's, 
I really feel like there's so many things to be um, thankful for about what's going on in the district. So it's a week of gratitude, and I'm really feeling it. Um, I also wanted to mention I did speak with um, Dan Pettigrew uh, about the condom availability program. He, in terms of the liability issue that was brought up, he said that you know the way that the list is written in terms of the material you have to put together for it, it's really pretty fail safe, and that any policy that we wrote would be reviewed, um, you know, to make sure that there were no, there were no liability issues there. So, um, I guess uh, I can put this on the agenda for the, the next meeting if we want to have a discussion about it, or if there's general consensus to just kick it to the policy committee. It's up to you guys. How how do we feel? Do we want to? Should I just bring it for discussion, or I'd say I can go to the committee. Yeah, I mean, yeah, being okay with that. I'm with that. Okay. Is there consensus? Okay. Well, I'm okay. not hearing any nays, so I'm going to take that as consensus. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. Um, and Dan was going to look for some sample policies that we could work from for that. Um, I also wanted to mention that Vicki and I have been in touch about the um, me making meetings with the um, law firms, and we're going to work on that for the January meetings. Uh, right now, I have two scheduled for January 22nd. I haven't heard back from the third one. Okay. Yeah. And so that would be at starting at 6. I hope that's not... That's okay. An inconvenience for you. Okay, and everyone else can hopefully make that. So for January 22nd. Um, We're doing all three? You're no. Two on the 22nd and the other one we have to get back to you. I figured we'd do a half hour for each. So we'll do two on one meeting and one on another. So we, we are doing all three? We are. Okay, got it. Yeah. Right. We start <laughs> oh, that yeah, meeting. Yeah, but not the same. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand I, the question. Yeah, I, I thought we were only <laughs> doing two first. of them. Yeah, we're going to do all three. So we start that meeting at six. Yes. Will that, and will that work for you? No, yeah, I just, okay. yep. Okay, okay great. Um, yeah, that's all I have. So um, we don't have any new or old business tonight. So moving on to the consent agenda. The use of the consent agenda permits the Board of Education to make more effective use of its time by adopting a single motion to cover those relatively routine matters which are included. Any member of the Board who wishes to discuss individually a particular piece of business on the consent agenda may so indicate, and that item will be considered and voted on separately, thus preserving the right of all Board members to be heard on any issue. Are there any items that any Board members would like to have pulled? 12.04. 12.04? Correct. Any others? Uh, 13.05 E6. Okay, can I have a motion to approve 12.01 through 16.08, um, less 12.04 and 13.05 E6? So, so moved. Second. Uh, motion by Alina, second by Flora. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm also in favor. Passes 8 to 0 with lots of gratitude for the donations. Um, can I have a motion to approve 12.04? So moved. Second. Eunice, second by Kristen. Uh, comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Uh, I'm also in favor. I'm in favor. It passes 7 to 1. Uh, can I have a motion for 13.05 E6? So moved. Second. Alina, second by Flora. <laughs> Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Um, so passes 7 to 0. Thank you. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So move. Second. Uh, Flora, second by Alina. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, yeah. That passes 8 to 0. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>